so much glory, and I'm also going to thank David because he did a good introduction of me when he was talking about um, archivists that really aren't archivists. We were librarians, so thank you very much. Okay, so what's in the archives? Today I'm here to share with you my experience in the world of archives, and I'm going to tell you how I entered into this field and about a grant that we were awarded at Oakwood and what we're doing today. Now, working in the archives was not on my highly probable list of things that I'm to do. First of all, I do not like history, so Rosalie, I understood <laughs> what you were talking about. Not only did I not like history, um, that was my worst subject in school. So I was a little bit surprised when Paulette and this was at the 2009 um, ABDAL meeting, said that Mignola was going to be retiring and her backup plan, should they not find a suitable person to take that job, was to transfer me <laughs> over to archives. Now when I left NCU, I thought that I would be going to a more methodical and predictable role of being a cataloger. I really enjoyed what I was doing. So I didn't worry about what Paulette said because I was going to be praying that a suitable <laughs> catalog, excuse me, suitable archivist would be found. Well, in, let's see, by August 2011, a suitable candidate was found for cataloging and I was moved to archives. <laughs> so, in the summer of 2011, Oakwood, along with a number of other HBCUs, and HBCUs are the historically black colleges and universities, of which Oakwood, of course, is a member. We were invited to take part in a photographic preservation workshop um, that was being held at the Atlanta University's Robert Woodruff Library. And it was a wonderful workshop in which we had presentations from Image Permanence, um, the Conservation Center for Art and Historic Artifacts, and former recipients of the Andrew Mellon Foundation Photographic Preservation Grant. There was a lot of information that was packed into a two-day workshop, and it was somewhat overwhelming, especially since I had not yet assumed the role of the archivist. However, I figured whatever I forgot, Paulette was there with me, and she would remind me. Um, or if needs be, I could call on one of the other HBCU mentors, such as Tuskegee. And it was interesting that Tuskegee was one of our mentors because when Oakwood was uh, formed, Tuskegee um, was one of the schools that it was patterned after. And yeah, so Tuskegee was one of our mentors. One of the highlights of the workshop was the announcement that the Library Alliance had another grant from the Andrew Miller Foundation and the funds would be distributed to a maximum of 10 um, of the institutions that were in attendance. Of course, we all had to fill out a grant application. Providentially, this announcement came early enough in the workshop to cause me to pay extra special attention to the presentations that were there, so I couldn't sleep. Um, I had seen, an, I'd seen our photographic collection and knew that we needed some help. When Phyllis Earls from Fur Review did her presentation, both Paulette and I, we really liked what, she, what we saw. We exchanged glances, and because her collection was very similar to ours, um, so we decided to talk to her after the presentation and we asked her if she would just send us a copy of what she had done. And she did. Oprah was preparing for SACS accreditation at the time of the, the, the application was due and Paul, Paulette and I were on the QEP committee. So we really did not have that much time to work on an application, especially since the final draft was due at that time. So we skipped out on some meetings and we decided we were going to work on the grant. We didn't spend that much time, at least not as much time as we thought we should, but um, we looked at Phyllis's application that, we, that she sent us and we decided to pattern it something like hers. Now she was also working on the application for herself because they were allowed to go in for a second time as well. Uh, we had to show, one of the things that we had to show on the grant was the library thought that Oakwood was deserving of a grant. Um, we have to say that, what I say? <laughs> what I can say is that even if we didn't get the grant, it really was a very informative exercise. It enabled me to see what was actually going on inside the archives. 
it allowed me to get very personal with our photographic collection as we looked over the project possibilities. I had a chance to know the various sizes and the forms that, um, of the photographs that we had. I was able to see how and why we, they were accessed, whether or not they were damaged, how they were housed, and so on. Well, when Paulette and I answered the last question, we, received, we reviewed our application, we prayed over it, and then we sent it off. This was the end of September, and they had promised to let us know by the end of October about the outcome of the grant. Well, I barely had time to settle into archives before Paul and I had to work on this grant. I just happened to be in Paulette's office when she said that she missed a call from, a per from the person who was in charge of the grant. We, had, we were a little confused because we weren't able to pull up the application that we thought we had sent. And we thought perhaps they were calling us about that. Maybe they weren't able to see it. But um, Paulette asked me to stay in the office while she called the guy back. And I kept seeing her nodding her head, okay, 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 yes! Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it was at that point that I realized that we had gotten good news. We were one of the recipients of the grant. In fact, he talked about how well it was laid out. Um, the whole application, the process was done very well. And I can thank Colette for that. She did quite a bit of the writing. I did some too, but she did a lot of the writing on that. Um, so we were recipients of the grant. Now came the next stage. Um, he told us we weren't allowed to announce the decision yet because he had to first talk to all the others that had applied as well as those had, that had received the grant. Now, the next few slides are going to show some of the information that we provided and what the grant was all about. Of course, we had to tell about the history. So here it is. Oakland was founded by the Seventh-day Adventist Church, that's us, in 1896 in Huntsville, Alabama. It began as an industrial school to educate African Americans in the South. Oakland has a beautiful natural setting on 1,185 acres of land, 380 of which made up the original purchase in 1895. Peter Blow who was the original owner of the plantation, um, and he lived on the land between 1811 and 1821. Sam Blow, or as we know him, Dred Scott, was also on that property around that time. Oakwood has undergone several name changes over its history. In 1896, to, um, it was called Oakwood Industrial School. By 1904, we became Oakwood Manual Training School. 1917, Oakwood Junior College. 1943, Oakwood College and in 2008, Oakwood University. Several principals served the school until it achieved junior college. Our first principal, of course, was Sloan M. Jacobs, who was seen there in that slide, if you can actually see it. Actually, it's a photograph. Um, several principals served until it achieved junior college status and elected its first president in 1917. In 1932, the first black president of the junior college was elected, and it was under his administration that the first baccalaureate degree was awarded. Oakwood now offers 47 <coughs> baccalaureate degrees in 20 disciplines, one graduate degree, the Master's of Arts in Pastoral Studies, and four associate degrees, three in Allied Health and one in Art. When the school first opened in 1896, there were 16 students. Uh, by 1917, there were more than 100. And it was during the 1974 to 75 academic year that we first topped 1,000. And in 2011, we topped 2,000. We're not there now, we lost a few. Oakwood University's archives is a unit of the Eva B. Dykes Library, and it was established in 1973, and that was with Clara uh, Rock. Yeah. Clara Peterson Rock. Um, it houses, of course, the regular things like yearbooks, newspapers, bulletins, and other paper-based documents artifacts, photographs, negatives, slides, videos, posters, paintings, and sculptures. However, this project focused on our photographic collection, which, con which contained actually over 17,000. That was what we counted at the time. Um, approximately 17,000 images that range in date from the early 20th century to present. These images are a pictorial history of Oakwood University's excuse me, buildings, Founders, principals, presidents, 
come up slowly. Wow. Class pictures, students, faculty, um, events, flyers, singing groups, organizations and clubs, black SDA pioneers, church leaders, hospitals, schools, churches, and more. The images range in size from one by one to 20 by 16, along with various panoramic sizes. The collection is a mixture of black and white prints, color prints, slides, and negatives. Well, in addition to preserving the rich history of Oakwood University, the archives also houses and disseminates information on the history and contributions of African Americans to the Seventh-day Adventist denomination worldwide. The archives photographic collections are unique in that it captures the history and development of various African American institutions, such as the churches, universities, K-12 schools, hospitals, and industries. The university's Aeolians, as you see pictured here, they won three gold medals this um, the summer of 2012 in the World Choir Games. Uh, Ebony Magazine has rated Oakwood as a top-ranked HBCU for science. In 2012, we were the USCAA Division I National Collegiate Men's Basketball Champion. We were also the runners-up in 2012, as well as this past year, uh, for the Hansa Campus All-Star Challenge. According to the Association of American Medical Colleges, in 2011, we were the number five feeder of blacks to U.S. medical schools. The archives is the preferred source for documents and photographs and documents when institutions, individuals, and churches are researching, planning reunions, tributes, dedications, anniversaries, verifying historical and general genealogical data, and writings and articles and books, as you can see here. The archives is also a classroom for the university. Students are required to study the history of Oakwood University in their first year of orientation to university. Faculty assign projects about knowing for whom buildings were named, about the presidents and their accomplishments, significant events, for example, about the student strike of 1931, Oakwood students' unauthorized participation in the Selma to Montgomery March, is, that's the one that you see right there on the top, uh, and the photo which resulted in disciplinary action, that's that same uh, picture that got them into trouble, and the circumstances leading to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. speaking at the Ashby Auditorium in 1962. The book, Ladies of Oakwood, was edited by the Oakwood History uh, professor, by an Oakwood History professor, um, that would be Dr. Sepulveda. Faculty and students in classes such as History of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and Seventh-day Adventist Theology find photographs of major events, conferences, and people related to the contributions and controversies involving African Americans particularly helpful. Various SDA and not SDA organizations and institutions request photos of Oakwood graduates and former students who have made significant leadership contributions to the church, as well as those who serve in non-church affiliate, affiliated professions. Researchers, historians, and authors are supposed to acknowledge the photographic and other services of the archives in their publications. Examples of famous Oakwood alumni would include the former mayor of Philadelphia, who was John Street. He was from the class of 1960. Six, Barry Black, um, chaplain of the U.S. Senate, class of 1970, take six, um, who you see photographed there and committed, Clifton Davis, Angela Brown, and season two winners of the Sing Off Committed, Amber Bullock, 2012 winner of Sunday's Best. Now for the timeline. We also had to do a timeline, and this timeline showed when we were supposed to do all sorts of things. I'm just going to move quickly past this because I know everyone's ready to go on break. Now, on our timeline, one of the things we had to do was to have a conservationist come and just evaluate or assess our, our collection. So the Conservation Center for Art and Historic Artifacts sent over Jessica Kaiser uh, for a two-day visit. And there she is standing with the staff. At that time, we, were ha we had a, we had a, um, an Abraham Lincoln display up, so that's what the background is. She looked at our collections, talked to us about preservation, gave us project ideas, and promised to send us a report. Her report helped us to finalize our project and work on our budget. Uh, the project would include transferring materials from existing folders 
to new folders, replacing original photographs in the museum, hosting a summer workshop, professional development, um, and purchasing preservation reference text. We also had to, oh, here's our budget. I'm not going to go through that. It was very tedious work. We had four pages of a budget. But we were able to purchase lots of good things. <laughs> and I think that was all. We also had an environmental site visit. Um, and someone came in from Image Permanence and we received eight data loggers. Um, we were able to place the data loggers in various rooms where we had our collection so we can monitor the relative humidity as well as uh, temperature and that type of thing. We also, oh, this is us getting our check. It was for $50,700, so we were excited. We then also had to hire student interns. We hired two student interns, um, and they were supposed to be able to stay with us for eight weeks during the summer, as well as work throughout the year with us. Um, they didn't mind doing it because for the summer to attend a nine-day um, workshop that was held at the University of Delaware, they received $3,000. And then they had to stay with us for another seven weeks, and they would get another $3,000 during the summer. So they got $6,000 for the summer. They were happy, and so was I. Um, didn't come out of our budget. Yes. Um, another thing. Oh. We had a job announcement. The students did have to apply for the intern internship. It was a um, pretty tedious project. They had, um, they had to, besides filling out that lengthy application, they had to turn in, you know, the the regular resume, get the references and that type of thing, um, and go through the interviewing pro um, process. These were our two selections, and that's them working in the archives. Uh, they also had to help us out with the summer workshop. One of them did this announcement for us for the summer workshop. We were able to invite people from Alabama A&M. Um, I don't know anybody that you see listed there. You read fast, you're a librarian. <laughs> um, now remember I mentioned Phyllis Earle. Um, she had sent us her application to look at and so that we could follow along. And she had applied. Well, they didn't get it. <laughs> and to, and to, rub, to make it worse, they, they assigned her to be our colleague instructor, meaning that she had to come by and make sure that we were doing things right. Uh, but she, uh, just a wonderful spirit, she came when we had our workshop and she just, uh, she, well she had to do a, um, she had to do a part of the workshop as well, but she also was giving a hand as we learned how to do all sorts of things. Um, okay, they're coming in all at once. <laughs> you know, that's our workshop where we had the people invited. We learned how to make sleeves and folders, four flap enclosures, panorama folders, constructed a custom box. So mostly I knew exactly what you were talking about yesterday <laughs> because we had to do all of that. Um, we made special housings. We also constructed a custom book cradle and learned how to deal with sticky adhesive residues on collection materials. In addition, we had lectures on albums and scrapbooks, saw how Prairie View, that uh, Phyllis's university, did their project and listened to as our student interns taught us what they had learned at the University of Delaware. They told us about their trip to CCAHA and how interesting it was. They also taught us about, um, I can't remember what it was, but anyhow. We had lectures on framed objects and cold storage. We enjoyed the networking over lunch and breaks, and yes, they really did enjoy the lunches that were provided. This is how we took off tapes off of photographs. Now, very fast pictures I'm going to show you. <laughs> Before rehousing with plastic outside, and this is after rehousing. Um, I'll just leave it at that for now. <laughs> the project, this is, those were our goals, to rehouse 10,000 photographs. We actually rehoused 12,050. Um, 2,860 of them had to be cleaned replaced original photographs in the museum. So five of them were replaced with facsimiles. We had to host the summer workshop and that went well. Attend professional development workshops. Yes, we attended caring for your collections by Heritage Preservation and training to train by lyricist and Preservation 101 by NADCC. Um, we had to purchase some reference textbooks. We got those two books there and conduct a preservation needs assessment. And 
that was done in February. We also had to provide access to photographic collection in a stable and protected environment. Um, my office was moved because that's the larger office, so we needed the space. I moved to a small one in the back, but we're able to, uh, to we were able to convert it into a flat file room with a desk there for student research. We are collaborating with faculty, and we are working on, or we will be working on securing additional funds. That's them again, still working, leaving off the backs of photographs. Almost done. Where we are now? Well, actually, our grant was extended. We got an additional $8,000 in funds uh, to continue with the project. Out of that, we were able to purchase a freezer because in the meantime, someone came and gave us uh, three boxes of negatives, uh, full boxes of negatives. We were also able to get ultraviolet ray protectors and sleeves. And now we're doing some marketing. Since I've been there down in the archives, we actually subscribe to Past Perfect. Um, and this is what it looks like for those of you who know the archival software. Um, we have Past Perfect Online, which should work. We don't have as many um, items in there as we'd like yet, but we are slowly putting them in. And so this is what it looks like. This is from our Anamite collection, as you can see here. Um, it's really interesting, a lot of fun to do. It's oakwoods.passperfectonline.com slash online.com. Um, let's see if we can get back to the other thing. We also use LibGuide. And this is how we promote it. Where you can look at digital tool collections. It talks a little bit about the archives. It talks about Oakwood history, the buildings, the markers, the presidents and they can get to that directly from our Oakwood website. And just recently, Paulette and I went off to another conference. We're, being a part of the HBCUs has really been very, very beneficial to us, besides the $50,000. Um, they, they do have a lot of workshops that we can go to, and we went to one where they were teaching us about various platforms that we can market um, our collections with. They taught us about Omika, which I knew nothing about. How many people in here know about Omika? Okay, there, there are a few. Omika helps us to build websites, and we did that. And I'm going to show you one shortly. We also learned WordPress. More people know about WordPress. The same people that know about, okay, more people know about WordPress, very good. And then they also had a tour app. And this was done over at Emory University. So it was really very helpful. Now this is the site that Paulette created. That doesn't want to open up that way, but that's okay. I will get it. I come to the wall. I think I'm still on. You closed the browser. I did, okay. Okay, that's not really going to be up right now. Did you close that room? Okay, we'll still do it. We actually have not really opened up the site yet. And this is actually very easy. It's a free one that anybody can do. You just go into omega.net. You may want to play with that. Um, create your own um, username and password, and then you can actually start building the website right here, and it's free. Say that again? Oh, okay, thanks. So that's a site. And mind you, we only had just a few days where they had to teach us all of these things. And this is what Paulette did in actually like one afternoon. 
I really was very impressed with her skills. <laughs> um, this is what it looks like, and we can enter the exhibit and you get to see she did from cotton fields to mission fields, and she talked a little bit about Anna Knight using the pictures that we had. Um, and she's divided it into early years, Battle Creek years, mission work in India, et cetera. You can read that. I think you can see it. Maybe not. Okay. Um, Southern Union of Seventy Adventists and Retirement Years. Um, family. That, that's actually her dad and her, I don't, and her sister, I believe. That's her sister and her sister's children and a friend of hers. I'm going to look at something else. Which one has her retirement years? Okay, no. That's true. Okay, see, she even has a picture of Kellogg on a bicycle. her book and here are her glasses. Someone mentioned glasses yesterday. Okay, and if you notice down here, um, for the metadata, we didn't have that much, but we do use Dublin Core as well, so I'm for Dublin Core. <laughs> okay, because that's the one that I'm now learning about. Okay, but thank you very much. I think I'm about done. Let's